Welcome to EduRev. Hi friends, good morning. This is Binu Krishna and I, I have considerable experience in dealing with the subjects of Indian geography, polity and art and culture for UPSC civil services examination. And let us have uh, this lecture to be an introduction to the future lectures on art and culture. First of all, coming to this particular subject, uh, art and culture is looked down upon by many students because uh, it is a byproduct. It is very closely linked to history, which means there is a lot of facts to be remembered because of the single reason that this is not a science based subject and there is not much of reasoning that could be done by the students because of which there is a tendency amongst the students to neglect the subject. But let us try to make this as much interesting as possible because I'm going to add in a lot of drama, a lot of pictures so that at least by seeing the pictures, uh, by seeing the martial arts, by seeing the graphical movement of the dance forms, uh, let the students try to imbibe the images and at least by the images they can reproduce in the uh, examinations. For example, let us say uh, that you have a question about uh, Chola temple architecture or the Chola structure of uh, Nadraja statue. Let us try to break it down in the form of pictures. Let us have a lot of pictures so that you can recollect if not the facts, at least if you can recollect the images. So I believe that uh, there is a definitive science in which things can be recollected. So in this manner, let us try to make art and culture as much easier as possible so that students can try to recollect the facts. So that's number one. The second point that I have to stress about is that in order for you to remember and uh, have a liking towards this particular subject, it is important that you have a natural liking towards the art and culture of India in general. Only if you try to appreciate your own culture, then you can reproduce it. You will try to learn more about it. Let us say that uh, you have a particular uh, dance form or a puppetry or something that you actually see in your day-to-day -day life in your uh, street or maybe across your uh, place where you actually see that particular dance or puppetry. When you see them, when you develop a natural liking to them, that is when you can easily associate with that particular subject. So this is how you can interlink or you can connect easily with this particular subject because this is not a reasoning based subject just like your geography or something where you can reason out the facts. It's not a science based subject. So generally you have to develop a natural liking to it. Another thing is you have to recollect the facts. You have to keep on revising it which applies for any given subject. So with that as a quick introduction, let us actually look at the course outline. So broad classification of the static content of the subject is given here and very important topics I would just list it down here starting from architecture. Now architecture is wherein we'll be dealing with uh, the IVC which is the Indus Valley Civilization. We'll be dealing about Mauryan culture, Gupta architecture, we'll be moving on to down south, your Pandya Chola architecture and all of it and very importantly the Mughal architecture and then after that uh, something else that is very important is your religions of the world and the schools of Indian religious philosophy. That's again very, very important because Buddhism and Jainism, they are said to be some of the very important subjects, very uh, interesting and UPSC just loves those subjects. So that's again very important. Uh, dance forms, theater, puppetry uh, and martial art forms like uh, they are very closely interlinked these four topics let me remind you they are very closely interlinked with one another like uh, if you take some chow dance form or martial art form then you can actually interlink it with some other uh, puppetry form or some other martial art forms and so on so that's about that and then we'll have a topic about indian literature indian musical art forms and you have a topic like unesco's uh, heritage list so this list it comprises entirely of the static part alone and 
of course there is this whole world of current affairs or the dynamic art forms uh, i'm sorry the dynamic uh, current affairs that you have to learn that we'll be dealing with a separate uh, subject or a separate topic now i have a chosen to focus only upon this because this is static content no matter what changes this is not going to change at all so that is why i have focused upon this so broadly this will be the uh, classification of the static content of this particular subject let us move forward yes this is going to be an introduction lecture so we'll start with what is culture uh, what is the importance of culture in human life and what are the general characteristics of culture that's it we'll be just focusing on these three topics concept of culture what is culture basically so culture is nothing but it is a way of life right the food you eat the language that you speak uh, the religion that you uh, practice the customs that is associated uh, in your particular religion uh, everything that is surrounding your social environment forms under or falls under this aura of culture so every society has its own culture and this culture is said to be the embodiment of the way in which we think and with the way we do things so humans they need the culture in order to lead their day to day life in fact it is said that culture is what makes humans behave to be as human beings culture refers to a human made environment which includes all the material and non material products of life that are transmitted from one generation to the next let me break down this particular definition even a bit more material and non material product material product is suppose let us say that you have inherited uh, say uh, uh, anything be it your uh, religion be it your uh, language that you speak these are non material products right so this is getting inherited from generation to generation and suppose let us say india as a whole we have inherited uh, taj mahal from the mughals so this is going to be a tangible product this is a tangible you can touch it you can feel it so this is a tangible or a materialistic cultural heritage so you have material and non material products of life which proves to be or which forms the culture of the humans in general and this culture it gets transmitted from generation to generation it varies from place to place it varies from regions to region it varies from countries to countries so that's why we say that we share a very close cultural bondings with the other south asian or the south east asian neighbors of us right so that is because we have a close cultural linkages with this is shared you can take many of the cuisines the cuisines are very much similar in fact many of the languages they have a very close linkages so all this shows that this concept of culture has a common linkage to it is culture and civilization different now there can be a normal misnomer that the word culture and civilization they can be used interchangeably that's not correct that's definitely not correct why so because culture is uh, the highest levels of inner refinement of a human being i'll repeat it it is the inner refinement as in you try to push yourself as a human being you try to attain the next levels of thinking it's an inner process if you try to learn a musical form it's an inner process it's not going to uh, give you a uh, greater uh, standards right it's for your inner enrichment that you are learning an art form yes that may give you money at the end of the day for the musical performance which is a different story but being or involving in a cultural activity it is more for the inner refinement you as a human being try to become more and more cultured it's a difference civilization let's come to it now civilization it is better ways of living socially politically and better utilization of the nature for this try to think about the example of indus valley civilization or your mesopotamian civilization or anything of that sort now in ivc as a community they have a huge economical activity 
as a community they have high scientific development they have better drainage system they have better ground planning so on and so forth which shows that they are advanced as a society scientifically economically and also politically there was some proof that there might have been a political division though it's not been a factual thing but of course there has been a centralizing tendency so that's also true so is culture and civilization same of course not it's actually quite different so what's the difference between them civilization means having better ways of living as a human you try to bend the nature you try to make or repent the nature to fulfill the human needs that's quite important you're trying to make make the nature bend to fulfill the human needs culture on the other hand it refers to the inner being so you, you try to improve the arts and sciences and various higher pursuits of human life that is nothing but culture and here as a civilization you have politically well defined groups try to think of ibc as an example as a culture some person who may be poor but still can be uh, thought to be a very highly cultured individual so that is again important some groups consider themselves as civilized and they look down upon others civilized groups oh no he is very poor so he must be an uncivilized guy he, that is actually a wrong thinking civilization uh, a wealthy person he might be civilized he might be living in a sophisticated bungalow and so on but still he may be throwing abuses at a very low working person someone who uh, someone who works under him he may be throwing physical or verbal abuses can you call that person who is living in the sophisticated bungalow to be a cultured person definitely no so civilized think about this civilized does not mean cultured so someone who can be very a uh, poor may still be the most cultured individual on the planet so yes that's a quick difference between culture and civilization how is this going to be useful for your examination try to understand that there can be words that can crop up either in your ethics paper gs4 paper or even in gs1 paper as a general characteristics of culture they can come or they can be a probability of a question in that case such intricate definitions which is not found on your regular textbooks may be very very useful so try to so what do you mean by cultural heritage that's the next topic that we have so the culture we inherit from our predecessors that is called our cultural heritage coming to think of it culture gets transmitted try to remember that culture is a historical process it gets transmitted from our ancestors and with passage of time there can be some experiences which can be added to it and some which is not considered to be that important which cannot be uh, followed by the present day generation that will be neglected that will be thrown away so cultural heritage it's a uh, evolutionary tendency you try to get it from your ancestors it is acquired it is learned and acquired from the ancestors try to remember that and national cultural heritage that word is again important uh, it means that nation also in some way they inherit the cultural heritage like for example architectural creations your know, taj mahal there can be certain intellectual achievements like for example patanjali's yoga sutra so that is one uh, thing that we have inherited yoga is a very important cultural aspect that we have inherited as a nation from the our ancestors similarly you can take about scientific discoveries uh, you can take um, aryabhata's uh, contribution towards mathematics you can take uh, bhaskaracharya's uh, contribution towards the uh, gravitational laws and so on and similarly for philosophical knowledge also you can quote considerable experiences um, so that's again very important so this is the crux behind cultural heritage what is cultural heritage uh culture can undergo a change but remember your heritage cannot because whatever you have inherited is inherited that's the final stage you would give changes to it right you keep making changes to it which means culture can change 
but can it mean whatever you have inherited can it change definitely no whatever you have inherited yes that is still in place but you choose to avoid it that's important you choose to avoid it that is why culture is liable to change but our heritage does not what are the general characteristics of culture there are some eight points try to remember that culture is learned and acquired like whatever the child try to remember this picture whatever as a child this kid tries to remember or this kid tries to follow that is actually learned and acquired from their ancestors from her elders so this is a learned and a process you uh, like for example the color of your skin your hair color your eyelids your eyebrow color so these are some things that you inherit as a form of genet genetics from your ancestors but culture you borrow it you learn it you acquire it from your surroundings from your parents from your friends from your neighbors so it's from the general community from the general society you try to learn it so the second point is culture is shared by a group of people suppose let us say that you and me try to bring about a new cultural practice just you and me the two of us we try to bring about a cultural practice do you think it will become a cultural practice in the generations to come definitely no so what is necessary a thought or an action it may be called as a culture only if it is getting shared believed and practiced by a group of individuals so culture needs to be shared by a group of people for it to be practiced in the generations after generations that's again important the third point is culture is cumulative meaning uh, your elders have passed on a baggage of culture let us imagine culture to be a big bag so your uh, ancestors your parents might have given you that this bag is our culture now what you will do is the present day generation they might uh, get attracted to something else and they will also add it as a part of their own culture for example the south indian marriages they have increasingly borrowed certain cultural aspects of the north indian marriages so there is a new addition that is taking place right this is why we say that when things are getting added to the existing volume of culture then a new culture is born and the culture becomes a cumulative culture it gets added try to remember that culture changes of course it is true because culture is highly dynamic my dear friends it keeps on changing and there is knowledge thoughts or traditions that are getting lost of course you consider certain uh, superstitious practices or old rituals or customs that can no more be followed you try to throw it out right so culture obviously undergo a change and because of the introduction of the present day uh, social media like whatsapp instagram and so on there is a natural tendency for culture to get eroded in a quick pace of time culture is highly dynamic following that uh, culture gets modified what has been practiced then look at the picture what has been practiced then has now undergone a change though we still follow the traditional attire we use it only for some traditional customs some traditional festivals on the regular wear for a regular uh, formal wear we we choose something different so that is how culture keeps on changing culture is very dynamic it keeps on changing constantly as new ideas and new techniques are added modifying the old ways culture is highly diverse and there is a system of interdependent parts like culture has got music culture has got language and it has got some ethical values attached to it so all these interdependent independent parts they join together and they form a holistic body which is called as culture so there is some independent parts they become mutually interdependent to form what is known as culture and culture gives us a permissible behavioral patterns culture is ideational meaning culture says that when you actually uh, see an elder you have to 
bow to them you have to hold us and you have to tell them namaskar so this is a form of culture namaskar or namaskaram so this is a culture so they say that this is the ideal pattern of behavior so it says that you should not be going on hitting another person you should not slap or throw any physical abuses to another person so it says that these are the ways in which humans ought to behave they give a set of ethical values culture gives us a set of normative behavioral patterns so permissible behavior patterns or ideal behavior patterns is given out by culture so these are the broad general eight characteristics of culture and if some question comes with regard to give out the specific characteristics of indian culture or give out the uh, importance of culture in human life you can quote these kind of examples modifying them a little so yes that might be useful for you importance of culture in human life culture is what uh, makes humans to behave like humans human beings are creators of culture and at the same time culture is what makes us human it is very closely linked to human life and it gives a meaning to lead our life and it is this culture that brings us closer to the philosophy and religion of us now the three eternal and the universal values in india which are truth goodness and beauty uh, that is again to be followed in our general life this quote that we have here it is not just a hinduistic way of philosophy rather it is the basic binding of the indian way of life because forget this values of satyam shivam sundaram there is also one more uh, point that i have to add here this quote of satyam shivam sundaram is important even from your examination point of view because this is the motto of doordarshan so the three eternal values and the universal values followed in india are that follow the truthful path because this is the same thing that is told in buddhism as well follow the truthful path to attain the ultimate truth to attain the ultimate good which is god and finally try to see what is the real beauty of life so that is the eternal values of india and coming to the examination point of view there can be certain codes there can be certain institution and there can be certain codes which can come up in the examination why so because try to understand this code satyam eva chete it was asked in the previous prelims paper that uh, satyam eva chete the code which is found in the national emblem of india is found in which upanishad so that is that took a lot of students it surprised because it's not that easily found in your regular textbooks so satyam eva chete is actually found in mundaka upanishad so try to remember certain very important codes so supreme codes uh, code would be yato dharma shitato jeha lsa is would be yoga kshema mahamahim and do darshan and similarly something that is very important uh, which is coming up very recently in the news articles is sabarimala temple and tatvamsi that's again important tatvamsi is actually found in the chandogya upanishad so that's again important chandogya upanishad tatvamsi and which means you are that which you think you are that which you seek and similarly there are some other famous codes which have been propounded by or which have been repeatedly used by our prime minister modi uh, which is nothing but uh, um, the vasudeva kudumbakam that's again very important vasudeva kudumbakam yes coming to it the whole world is one family uh, that is found in maha upanishad Uh, it is also getting a mention in topadesha uh, similarly you also have another code which is atithi devo bhava in fact you have the atithi devo bhava campaign uh, in indian tourism so ministry of tourism runs this campaign also so try to remember that so that is why when you put another thing is please try to remember this key point when you put these kind of codes in your ethics paper or in your essay paper it further adds value to your answer so yes that concludes the lecture for the day 
there is a lot of over 10,000 plus questions that is found in our EduDev Infinity platform, which is prepared by the UPSC experts, which is made according to the level of UPSC. Try to follow all of that and follow the art and culture lessons. In the next module, we'll be having an interesting lesson on IVC. Thank you so much and have a nice day.